We're in this beautiful venue, the Avalon in Hollywood, and I'm hanging out right now with Cameron Boyce, who's great in this show. We call it Paradise City. And uh, so good to have you here, man. I love your vibe on the set. You're always Thanks, so cool. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, everybody's really cool, man. Everybody's chill. We're all having a good time. Uh, everybody's vibing, you know? Yeah. So it's cool. I noticed that. It's one of the things, I mean, you've been acting since you were such a young guy and uh, some of the different things that you've been in, like from a Panic at the Disco video, which was so cool, yeah. to all the TV shows that you've done yeah. and movies like Grown Ups. But you, I mean, you've seen a lot of sets. Would you say that this is a, a group of people that just seem to have a good vibe that keeps the energy right? Yeah, it's so honestly, one of the most underrated things about a set and what makes a project good is how people get along sort of the energy on set that translates then into, you know, the project, right? Um, so it's really important that people are connected, that people are communicating, um, and that people are just cool with each other, you know? Yeah. And uh, you can really tell sometimes when people don't vibe, yeah. but then you can, on the flip side of that, when people do vibe, you really see it and it really shines through, you know? So I think uh, this is one of those where it'll shine through. That's great. Now tell me about your character. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Simon uh, Ostergaard, but you know, his last name is a little controversial. Um, so his dad, um, Oliver Ostergaard, is um, a really big, a big wig in the music industry. And Simon is his son, but you know he's never met his dad, so he has this resentment build up towards his father, um, and his mother and him have sort of suffered from that whole experience of abandonment. Yeah, and uh, right, of course. Um, and so for him, um, a lot of his storyline is about you know figuring out what it is that he wants to be, right? Um, and he has this passion for music, the same that his dad did but he doesn't want to be in his shadow. So he doesn't want people to know his name. He doesn't want people to sort of associate him with his dad. And uh, that's a big sort of struggle for him, um, but he still wants to pursue it. So he ends up sort of connecting with his mom who has her own problems. And as he's trying to manage his mom's drinking problem and his own you know, dream and career and his school, um, he ends up sort of in this crazy, um, story where he ends up, you know, sort of really thriving, and uh, he's just a strong kid who, you know, um, deserves the world because he yeah. works hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely does. It's uh, obviously since it was written by Ash Avildsen, right. um, it's your character is based on a young version of him. It is, yeah, it's his story. It's his story. The first, actually, it's really funny. So the first day that I ever met Ash, um, it was maybe a couple days before we started shooting, but I called him up. And I said, hey, man, I'd love to talk to you and just, you know, get your take on the script and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And I showed up at his house and uh, it was him and Boo Boo were actually there. And uh, they were talking about this hawk that had flown into his house. Holy shit. All right, bird, let's figure this out. You're blending in real nice with the furniture. Tiger, tiger, get away. And he was like, yeah, man, this hawk came into my house and it was crazy. And I was like, wait, a hawk flew into your house? Dude. Just like an hour ago, a hawk flew into my yard. And so we started talking about it and we looked at the timestamps on both of our phones. We both took videos of this hawk. Beaker, there you go, no, over. Tiger, wow, there you go, yeah, man. And it was like within an hour of each other, we both had hawks in our properties like on our properties so we just it was like dude this is like the weirdest connection ever like yeah. some spiritual like, thing going on dude it's some sort of cosmic like yeah. the universe was trying to tell us something man it's yeah. it's amazing like yeah we're sort of we've talked about that ever since it's like yeah. wild he's an amazing guy he's, he's so, so great cool, man he's such a nice guy he has a vision for it which is always so important and also like you know a lot of this being so close to his heart right yeah. he's been in this you know this uh this world forever so for him, you know, it's obviously super important to get it right, make it accurate, make it true to rock and roll. And and that's why, you know, the character that I play, it's, you know, really important for me to make sure that it's truthful to him. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. I think it's great. Now, on the flip side, you've been a part of a, a breakdancing crew since you were yeah. a young kid, right? Yeah, Ex-mob, yeah, yeah. right? Yes, Tell me sir. about it. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was that was uh, back when I was really dancing. That was a good time. Yeah. Actually, you know what's funny? I think... 
Is this the Avalon? Is that where we yeah. are? I think I think I there's been maybe like a B-boy summit here or something. I remember this place from a jam actually, so yeah. it's cool, yeah. But yeah, it, yeah, the hip hop community is amazing, man. It's it's a really fun, sort of similar to the rock and roll community in that you know, uh, maybe it's a little bit controversial and people sort of look at it a certain way, but it's all about love in the end, and it's all about you know people coming together, right? And so yeah, the 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 breaking was uh, back when I was maybe eleven. I started ten, maybe younger, and um, it was just a way to express myself, you know. Yeah. We're all artists, right? And we all do stuff that's that's uh, you know sort of true to us and uh, fun, and we just put ourselves out there, and that's yeah. what it was for me. You know, that was my thing. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Do you have any favorite um, records or artists you can tell me about who you love to listen? Uh, yeah, yeah, I listen to a lot of old stuff actually. Um, I'm kind of a Motown guy. My dad grew grew up uh, listening to a whole bunch of Motown stuff, but yeah, I'd say like Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, two of my favorites. If I'm getting into rock and roll, though, I got to be honest, Rush is one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, Great prog band. Yeah, yeah. Canadian. Yeah. They're pretty tight. Yeah. Absolutely. Canadian, eh? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I listen to so much random stuff, but yeah, yeah. a few names for you there. That's amazing. And looking at your ancestry, too, with 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 Joanne, who yeah. so was one of the original Clinton 12. Like yes. That is amazing. It was the first time integration took place in a school, which was such an important moment. Is that wild? Does, you, do you, does your family tell you stories about it? Oh, man. Do you yeah. know her? We, we, we talk about it constantly. It's actually funny. Uh, so there's a new Tennessee State Museum that just opened, like, couple months ago <laughs> my nana was originally gonna go by herself and I was like no you're not so like yeah. we all packed up and went and it was it was such an amazing thing to see you know it was not that long ago it was 54 yeah. that uh, this high school this all-white high school in the south in Clinton Tennessee was desegregated yeah. by my grandmother who's still alive and in her 70s and yeah. still going and she will be for a long time right so it just gives you this perspective of you know how close that is yeah. wasn't that long ago right so you sort of think about it and you're like wow it's crazy but yeah she has the craziest stories but I think the best thing about her is that she's one of the happiest people I've ever met like she could be so bitter about the way things went and you know not want to talk about it all she wants to do is spread love and positivity and you know people of you know white people from the south who were not very happy that she was there originally. I've like reached out to her on Facebook and like apologized and she's like so quick to forgive them. And like, it's really an amazing story. And I'm super thankful that she's, you know, still with us cause she's, uh, she's a living legend. That's amazing. Well, I love that story to tell you the truth. It's incredible. I gotta tell you Cameron, it's been so much fun hanging out and talking to you. Thank you. It really has. And we will be talking more, I'm sure, throughout oh, yeah. the shoot. Oh yeah. Which will be great. Yeah, Thanks. We'll get it, yeah. Awesome. It's Cameron Boyce, everybody. We are at the Avalon for Hip Parader. Cool, man. That was good, right? <laughs> that was great. Cool. Wasn't he awesome. great?